Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome. Today's video is about my traveling knitting project. It's finally finished, blocked and ready to show you. Yes, it's the traveling project I took around the UK with me. So the pattern was gifted to me by a lovely lady and subscriber who lives in Israel. So before we get into the video, I just want to say no politics or nasty negative comments, please. They will be blocked, deleted, reported, whatever I can do to get them out of my head. And I am praying for all the innocents involved in this conflict they did not ask for and for a speedy resolution for everybody involved in this conflict. That's all I will say. So let's get into my project. Well, the pattern is... It's a shawl, knitted shawl come neck warmer, the Flying Fox Shawl by Olga Fayum. Sorry, we're going to have planes going overhead. A paid for pattern. The link will be in the description below, the Ravelry link for this pattern. This, now, I first saw this shawl on a um, Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. She'd made a couple and I fell in love with it and I put it in my Ravelry wish list. And within a matter of days, someone had gifted it to me. Absolutely surprised me. I was so blown away. Here is a picture of the pattern in the shawl, a shawl pattern that I printed off from Ravelry. Okay, so kudos to Ruth because she does some amazing shawls. And I love watching to see what she's done. My shawl, I made it in baby alpaca from gorgeous chocolate and the chocolate alpaca farm. That was somewhere I visited last year in Victoria and loved it. I'll tell you a bit of, I've done a bit of research because I've forgotten quite a bit of the info I learned. Gorgeous chocolates is just minutes from the 12 apostles. Well, there's only eight now because some have eroded into the ocean. For over 16 years, they have been well renowned for their delicious handmade Belgian chocolates chocolate treats. Ian and Angela purchased Gorgeous Chocolates in 2019. They have rebranded the business to Gorgeous Chocolates at the Chocolate Alpaca Farm. Why Alpaca? Ian and Angela have owned and run Surilana Alpacas for over 20 years. It is Victoria's largest alpaca stud and Australia's largest Surrey alpaca stud. Now visitors can not only be treated with to great chocolate, hot chocolate and coffee, they can also see the large herd of alpacas and llamas. The shop is also known for a large array of wonderful alpaca products made from their super soft fleece. The products range from clothing, giftware, bedding, carpets, and there is a new large cafe, cafe now complete with great views of the alpacas. I can vouch for the cafe. We stayed for brunch, had the most amazing hot chocolate and did quite a bit of shopping. There is some amazing chocolate goods, alpaca goods. And I bought yarn there. I bought 12, 50, uh, no, I bought two, I bought two of each color, three colors of 50 gram balls. They were $12.95 a ball of baby alpaca. So, the colours I bought were, and I've got the ball bands here, I bought champagne, cream, and rose grey. That's the ball band. Uh, manufactured in Australian alpaca in Peru. So these were manufactured in Peru, even though it was Australian alpaca. 8 ply, 50 gram, 100 metres in each ball and 12.95 a ball. So I bought six because that's all they had. I bought this particular alpaca yarn because it was so soft. The softest yarn I've ever felt. Would you like to see my blocked finished project? Ta-da! Here it is. So I did strips of different colours so I could use all the colours with the different varieties of pattern like the garter stitch, the stocking stitch, the lace stitch, the holes, everything and it turned out absolutely amazing. I love it. It is so soft. I'm keeping it for myself and yes it will go hopefully next year 
on my traveling yarn adventures look at that stitch patterns look you can see a mistake there are two mistakes that I picked up when I was blocking it one is I don't know if it's a tension mistake there it looks funny and one is actually a stitch mistake but you won't see it on me because it'll wrap around my neck and keep me lovely and warm if the weather is cool when I go next year so what did I have left over? Well, it's not as big as the pattern. I cut back on some of the rows so I could accommodate all my yarn. And that is the scraps I have left in each colour. Ta-da! Now, they're not necessarily scraps because as you can see on the pattern, the ends have tassels. And I wasn't going to tassel my end ends, but maybe I will just to use up the little bits of scraps. Who knows? I haven't decided. I do have a photo of it laid out flat for you to see. And hopefully you won't pick my two mistakes. One of them I showed you. The other, I can't even find it half the time until it's laid out flat. So, that was my travelling knitting adventure. The pattern was easy to follow. Well laid out. Ruth's in her podcast said it was a mindless knit not quite for me because I'm still trying to build my skills um, knitting but I really loved it and yeah it was so easy and highly recommend if you're looking for a shawl that can be made bigger or smaller into a neck warm-up this is an awesome pattern I'd love to make it again in either just one color or maybe a variegated yarn I haven't decided what do you think? Would it look good in one colour, like the pattern? Or should I try variegated and see if the pattern stands out? Let me know in the comments below. But that's pretty much it for all my travelling adventures to the UK. You're probably sick of them by now. But yes, I do love it. It's so soft. Baby alpaca. And yes, I'd love to go to Peru. Who wouldn't? Machu Picchu. Wow, that'd be awesome. Okay, guys, that's it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed my yarn adventures. Thank you to my lovely subscriber for this awesome pattern. It was so generous and kind of you, and I am praying for you every day. Take care, stay safe. Until next time, maybe you should try a new shawl pattern and be a little bit creative. Bye for now.